I apologize if my honesty left an inappropriate or dishonorable impression. I didn't come to these woods to squalor in my solitude as if it is some lonely crown. And I didn't want to waste two years and two months of a fleeting life in an empty fog with no purpose. And I didn't come here simply to write. I came to these woods because I wished to live deliberately. To strip life down to its barest essentials. And see if there wasn't something life couldn't teach me. And not when I came to die discover that I had not lived at all. I came to Walden Pond to discover my life. Not abandon it. And only then to write what I truly, passionately believed. To write what I truly lived so that others, my friends, could also live simply and honestly. My friend, the world is yet simple. Your cries of simplicity fall on deaf ears. Even so, the rumbling of the coming industrial storm grows louder. The thunder of coming change will not be felt along the shores of Walden Pond alone. It will be global. England. France, Germany, beyond. The forests will be replaced with factories. The woods plowed under, covered over with warehouses. Perhaps the clouds beyond the distant lightning are not clouds at all, but oceans of smoke from the cities. I, I don't see it when, you know, everything around you looks just fine. Well, the woods by Walden Pond look particularly lovely this September. I don't hear no thunder. I don't see no lightning. And the only rumbling I hear is from my tummy with no supper. I didn't mean to be rude or accuse. But to speak honestly, as you say, it takes two to speak truth, one to speak, and another to listen, and I have listened. Then so shall I. Then we're friends then? Oh, let's hug! Look, I don't need a hug. I need relief from this incessant arguing. It's not arguing, Henry. It's a test of your convictions, a test of your passions. A test? Why? Because to be great is to be misunderstood, and I believe that you have done a great thing. Well, of course, I agree with you, Henry. That's why I bought these acres of land along Walden Pond. That's why I gladly offered you this spot here in the woods. But do you believe this yourself? Do you believe in your heart the value of what you have done? Hear me, my friend. Once you leave this place, everything you believe in will be ripped apart and judged by men of smaller minds. Or held in their highest esteem. I don't need their approval. No, whatever you do, you will need courage, because whatever course you decide upon, there will always be someone of lesser will to tell you you're wrong. Or fools who will tempt you to believe that your critics are right. And uh, no one ever erected a statue in honor of a critic. And I would argue your degree of greatness will be measured by the extent that you are rejected. For remember, Socrates or Luther, Galileo, every pure and wise spirit that ever walked this earth confused everyone around him. So my hypocrisy has turned into confusion, and in turn my future and my works will be understood by no one? And what of my life? At this cabin, at this pond, have I indeed wasted two years Two months and two days of my life. To be great is to be misunderstood. So, hit your wagon to a star, my boy. What you write, what you believe, and the road your passions have traveled will be understood someday. Then you can see it. You can feel it, too. Yes, I can. Some can. Most will not. The majority will ignore it in favor of their material comfort. But 
if we will pause for a moment, if we will bend down on a humble knee and truly gaze at the brilliance of the tiniest life in our hands, we can use what you have written as a magnifying glass to peer deep into the simplest of life's beauties. In my heart, I believe the world will one day recognize this of you, Henry. But not now. Not now, that's why I say someday. Your writing will have purpose and impact someday. And if this someday occurs within a moment well beyond my lifetime, what of my words? What of my writings and journals? Rest these words regarding your love and respect for this earth in the care of those who love and respect you. Let your works rest in the protection of your friends who believe in you. <laughs> the most striking part of any day is to encounter a mind that startles us. And what you have done, what you are writing, will startle many for generations to come. Much is published, but so little printed. An honest book is the noblest work of man. Unfortunately, I'm imprisoned by the narrowness of my experience. So be it. It is done, then. To my house, all, for supper and celebration. Uh, here, um, my notebook and my flute. <laughs> One pause for reflection, and then I'll follow. <laughs> Oh, my dear Henry, in the end, always the last. And always alone. beauty of the last hour of the day. I do believe this earth is the mother of all creatures. As surely as the sunset shall translate me into the ethereal world, as surely as the last strain of music which falls on my ear shall make age be forgotten. So surely my friend shall ever be my friend and reflect a ray of God to me. <laughs> <laughs> 